So hello, everyone, and welcome back to our podcast, Keeping It Together, where we're sharing stories of wellness through COVID. I am recording from my house here, and I'm here doing a podcast with our guest, Pamela Roach. Hi, Pamela. Hello. Hi. I'm also from my house. Perfect. So, Pamela, I'm wondering if you could give me just like a a uh, recap of your life like what's what's going on now what's what happened I don't know just tell me about you sure um so I have two kids um they're eight and ten right now they were six and eight uh when the pandemic started two years ago um I work at the University of Calgary so I am a researcher I work in family medicine um I try to to do cool stuff with the kids and keep them busy. Um, so they're not just like, you know, watching Disney plus all day. Uh, so we do lots of fun things. Um, try to get out to the mountains. I have a little dog that we got, we got a COVID puppy. Um, so I have a little sort of 16 month old dog that runs around occasionally. Um, and a husband and he works for Alberta health services. And I just kind of, kind of keep, going. I'm a member of the Métis Nation of Alberta, um, but I originally come from a little place in Manitoba called St. Laurent, um, and then my family moved out here when I was really small, so I've grown up mostly out here on Treaty 7 territory. Awesome, awesome. So can you tell me, like, what made you get into family medicine? What took you in the direction of your work? Oh, that's a good question. Um, so my my degree my undergraduate degree is actually in primatology so that was super fun um very research-based and studied non-human primates um and then was just kind of didn't know what i wanted to do next and started taking research assistant jobs and really loved health research um and a lot of the research that i'd done in my undergrad was like observation right and that's right up my alley i'm a bit of an observer um and then just to be honest, I uh, kind of took opportunities as they came and then ended up doing a PhD um, in medical and human sciences because there was an opportunity to get funding to be able to do it, which I couldn't have done without it. Um, and then when I came back, I did that in the UK. And when, when I came back to Canada, I applied for some postdocs and ended up um, doing a postdoc in family medicine. And so I've historically worked a lot with people who live with mental health conditions, uh, people who live with dementia, and I've always been like a non-clinical, um, so I'm not a doctor, like I'm a, a clinician, an MD doctor, um, but I've always kind of worked in like clinical settings doing clinical research, uh, but as a non-clinician. And so um, when I started looking for faculty jobs, I started my faculty job during the pandemic, which was weird because I just was still here in my dining room and clicking on different Zoom links um, and sometimes like the same Zoom links. Um, and so like the family medicine just seemed like a really good fit for community-based work. Um, there's really great colleagues already in the department doing indigenous health work. Um, and it's just, it seemed like a natural fit for the kind of stuff that I do. Right. So did you, have you always worked at U of C? Did you go to school at U of C? I did my undergrad at U of C quite a long time ago. Um, and then my dad is, so my mom is Métis, it's Red River Machif from St. Laurent. My dad is a British immigrant to Canada. So because of that, I have British citizenship. So when I finished my undergrad, I just didn't know what I wanted to do with my life and saved up for a one-way ticket um, and just thought, well, I'll pack a suitcase and I'll move and I'll try to get a job. And if I hate it, I'll come back. Um, and then got some research assistant jobs there. So I actually ended up doing my PhD at the University of Manchester uh, in the UK. So I've worked there as a research assistant. I've worked for the, the, the National Health Service over there. I've worked for the Calgary, what was the Calgary Health Region before there was Alberta Health Services. Um, and then when I came back, I worked for the U of C and I did my postdoc at the University of Alberta. And then I've worked in a few other places. I worked for the Health Quality Council of Alberta. So lots of like health systems type jobs. Um, and then came back and was working at the U of C um, as like a research manager um, and then had an adjunct position. So um, came back to the university because there was lots of cool people doing really cool research here that I wanted to be connected to. Um, and then when I was in that job, just sort of started applying for faculty positions. What was your COVID experience like? What was happening when you found out that, you know, 
we were going into lockdown and how was lockdown for you? How has it been the past two years? You know, wow. What a question, hey, because I feel like it's loaded. <laughs> the, the two years, I feel like everything has happened and nothing has happened at the same time, right? Like I've spent two years um, at my computer in my dining room. Um, but yeah, I remember, I remember it, it was happening, right? We were, I was watching the news. I got a little bit obsessed with watching what was happening, like in Italy and the UK. Um, yep. Same here. Yeah. And was, was probably in an unhealthy way. I was, I was keeping track of it. And then my parents like went on their first ever, they, they retired and they went on their first ever all-inclusive vacation on like February, it was the leap year. It's February 29th. I dropped them off at the airport and we were joking, being like, Ooh, get some hand sanitizer. Um, and then while they were away, things just exploded. So they were sending me pictures of like their vacation on the beach being living their best life. And I was like, you guys know, like, this is really serious. Um, and so for me, it was really interesting because I was tracking all of like the, the airport shutdowns and like all the travel restrictions and hoping they were going to get back. Okay. And then looked like the total panic shopper because I remember the day they called the pandemic. It was my husband's birthday. And I thought, well, I'll just run into the grocery store and grab some milk. And the grocery store was chaos. So I thought, oh, I should probably go pick up some things. So we came home, had a piece of cake, and then I went out to the grocery store. So I had my cart and my a cart for my parents because they were coming back the next day. So I totally looked like a panic shopper. I was telling everyone in Safeway, like, no, this my parents are on vacation. It's not all for I'm me. Not, <laughs> don't worry. I'm not panicking. Um, <laughs> and I remember that was like the end of the week. And then there was, we were going into the weekend and I have two kids, like my kids are in grade one and grade three at the start. And we were like, well, you know, maybe, maybe they'll still be at school for a little while. And then on the Sunday, they announced the schools were shutting and they said they'll shut for, I think, I can't remember how long they said initially, two weeks, right? Um, right. The two week turnaround, they said, right. something like that. Right. Two weeks. <laughs> Look at where we are now. And yeah. I said it, I two weeks. And I remember at the time thinking like, oh, it's going to be longer. Like if they close the schools and my, interestingly, my husband used to do emergency planning for the National Health Service in the UK. And he always said closing the schools, like he was doing it during swine flu, during the swine flu outbreak. And he said, if they close the schools, like that's, as, that's the worst it gets because they will do everything to keep the schools open because people have to go to work. Right. And when they closed the schools, I think I was like, oh, they're not going back this year. Like they're not going to finish this year at school. Wow. So I was trying to not <laughs> think that. Um, but those first two weeks were really I think it was almost fun. Right. Like we were like we were doing little apps with movement videos to make sure that they weren't just sitting around all day. We were going for walks every day into the park. And then it kind of it kept going. And I would say having my kids at the ages that they were at when it started, like grade one is a big year for kids when they're learning how to, to go to school. Um, mm -hmm. And both of my kids are, you know, like they have some extra needs and things. And so it was a, it was a struggle. We were both working full time. Um, I got a COVID related grant right at the start, like April, 2020, that just ballooned and became huge. And so it was, and everyone was like, it's only going to last a couple of months. So like, we need to do this work now. Um, and it was very, I would say it's probably been one of the most stressful times of my life was having the kids at home and doing school and working and everything else. Right. And then my parents are older <laughs> and they were also, they had to quarantine for two weeks when they got back from Mexico. And so right. they were like, oh, but we can go to Tim Hortons, right? To the drive through And I was like, no, no, you can't. So every day we were going to get them coffee because they need it's like their ritual to oh. go out and get coffee. Um, That's very nice of you. It was very stressful. <laughs> <laughs> but it was, it was a lot and it's been a lot. And that, that year making the decision of whether or not we sent our kids back to school in person and what were our options. Mm -hmm. And we just didn't feel like we had a lot of options. So we did send them back. Um, but that was chaos, right? That 20 fall, 2020 to summer, 2021 mm -hmm. year was, was chaos. Cause they were home and they were at school and then not at school and then home for a few weeks. And, um, and then last year, my dad was diagnosed with cancer as well. So then we've been oh, sorry. extra careful, right? So like being really, yeah. really limiting, like what we were doing to make sure we were protecting them because they still needed help with like mowing their lawn and getting groceries. 
That sounds like a very, very stressful time. I know it was stressful for everyone, but holy, that's a lot on your plate. Um, I'm wondering, what did you do to, we call it keep it together? What did you put in your kit to help you cope with um, COVID and throughout COVID? And um, yeah. Yeah, that's a great question. I know we're going to talk about like feeding and stuff. And I do want to talk about that. I think I do want to acknowledge too, like the, I often think about, because I, I was doing my PhD when the swine flu pandemic happened. Um, and I think had I, had that, had this been the similar kind of outcome, like there's no way I could have continued my work. There's no way we would have had the same social connections. Right. So even being able to have like zoom and those kinds of things. So being able to still connect with people in a different way was, was super helpful. Um, weirdly kind of became, well, maybe not weirdly, but weirdly and wonderfully became friends with some physicians on Twitter. Um, and one of them started like a film club where at the time it was every week and now we do it like every couple of weeks. Um, and it's still happening like two and a half years later. But we will watch like on a, a Netflix party, we watch a movie together, right? And so have built a awesome. sense of community. Yeah, and we're all we all work in like health related areas, right? And can chat about stuff. So um, that's been really wonderful. And then um, I kind of, it, it was weird because like it was super stressful. I was working a ton, like I was working. I felt like all I was doing was like working and sleeping and not trying to do other stuff and there wasn't like I used to go to the gym at work and there's a, a gym at work and I used to go there and I was like well I can't go there anymore and what do I do um and then thought well I've always wanted to start feeding and to learn how right and I said well now okay I've got some time sometimes like I was trying to claw that back and and then I thought I needed something because work was so intense I needed something that I could do that wasn't work right so that mm -hmm. in the evening I wasn't just like putting my kids to bed and thinking, well, I'll just get my laptop out and keep going. I needed something that would keep my hands not on a keyboard. Um, mm -hmm. So there's a, a store in Calgary called Moonstone Creation. Um, and they have, they used to run like feeding classes and I always meant to take one and I was going to sign up for one and me and my mom were going to go together. And then during the pandemic, they started making masks, right? They immediately transitioned to, to sewing masks, but they also made these little like DIY feeding kits that you could do at home. And then you would join, they would do a Zoom and you could join by Zoom and go through it together and get some help if you needed help. So I thought, well, that seems like a reasonable thing to do. Um, so did that and bought the kit. I think it was like September, October, and they were doing um, poppies, right? Like we did poppies. And I thought, great, like my papa, um, like my mom's dad in Manitoba, he was a veteran and stuff. And that seems like a cool, a cool connection. So um, I'll get one of those. And so I did, and I did one and I don't like, it took me, it took me hours. Like the, the woman who was doing the class, like she can do them in like an hour. Right. I, I think it took me like 20 um, and it didn't, <laughs> it wasn't very good. It didn't look very good. <laughs> Um, but I really enjoyed it, right? Because it was really almost like mindful. It almost gave me, I had, cause you have to focus. It's so small and detail oriented that it takes a lot of mm -hmm. focus and it was like, okay, then I'm not just sitting around watching TV or watching the news, um, which was a huge problem <laughs> for me. Um, but it kept me busy and it gave me a sense of purpose and it gave me, um, a nice, you also had this like lovely little outcome at the end, right? Yeah, it kind of sounds like, um, like you were mentioning mindfulness, it sounds like it's almost like a meditation, yeah. in a sense, like you're just focusing solely on one thing and just getting it done. And you have this beautiful, um, like, kind of present at oh, the yeah. end. So that's, yeah, that sounds incredible. Yeah. Um, so I'm wondering, like, how was this important to you? Did it feel like it connected you with your Indigenous culture? Did it feel like, how, how else did it connect you? Did you do it with your mom? Or tell me a little bit about... So what's interesting is I haven't done it with my mom. Um, and I think just because of, you know, like my dad's health, like my mom's been having to focus in other areas, but my mom loves it, right? Like totally loves it. Um so, but it, it was a really nice connection. And so what is nice is that I've started doing it with my kids. So, oh, yeah, lovely. so we can do that. Um, and I find 
I don't because then, you know, I, I think I tweeted about one of the, the things of the flowers that I made and someone said, oh, if you make them like I'd love to buy them, you should sell them. I was like, you know, this isn't that's not why I'm doing it. I'm doing it because it's good for me. It's healthy for me. Um, and also like most of the things I make, I give away. Right. So like I'm not this isn't about making money or selling anything. This is about me like doing something that is healing and and nice and pleasant for me to do right that I feel that I can do things for other people and so um I've I've given away most of like the poppies that I've done I tend to do little flower like metis flower brooches and so then if I you know if we have an elder and we're requesting um them to do something with us or a piece of work when I gift like tobacco and things I'll usually try to beat them something and give them something as well um, and then I've done, so that woman that I mentioned who started, she's a physician, the one who started the movie club on Twitter, she's an OBGYN. Um, and so I've actually, I beaded her like a, a little uterus with a smiley face on her. Oh my God. That's awesome. So that was awesome. one of my favorites. Oh. And my son asked me to beat him a little baby Yoda pin. So I made him a little baby Yoda oh. for school, um, and so like, it's things like that, right? That it, it's a nice connection and it's actually led me to try other things. So for Christmas, I actually made both of my parents mitts, like leather mitts for Christmas. So I beat it oh, wow. and then learned how to sew leather, which was new. And I got a little bit injured, but it's really nice. It's led to like me connecting to other things that just make me feel more grounded. Um, and it's a nice way to to sort of pass the, those good feelings on to others too. Awesome. That's incredible. I'm excited because we're actually going to bead together. I've never done beading. I've never, like, do you make just, is it little like sculpture, like almost like little sculptures or what is it that you can, you can make with it? Or is it just. So, anything? so far I really, I feed like, I essentially do pins right now and I'll just find pictures. What I tend to do is like find like open source pictures on um, the internet. So I had a grad student who recently defended her exam and graduated and she has pet birds. So I found like a cute little cartoon parrot picture and beaded her a little parrot. Um, this is, I have one here that I keep at my desk. Um, our, Perfect. The Indigenous Primary Healthcare and Policy Research Network has a butterfly as a logo. So I like beaded the logo Oh my gosh, that's beautiful. Um, I work wow. in dementia care, beaded like a brain, um, but I do, I have supplies, I, they're right behind me, um, because I want to learn to try to do earrings. So that's my next. Yeah. Oh, wow. That's awesome. Wow, that's super cool. Um, so we're going to get together in the next episode. It's going to be you, me, Adam Murray and Lewis Crochu, we're all going to get together. And I think you're going to help us to learn how to beat. I don't think, I mean, I could be wrong, but I don't think any of us have done it before. So I'm excited. I'm excited. Are we all going to be making different, different things? Are we going to make, try to make the same thing? I mean, I'll, you'll have to be I'll our have teacher. To think about it. Like, I think um, maybe I'll, maybe I'll do a quick email and ask people, you know, what would you beat? Um, but let me think about it. Maybe I'll just think of something funny and surprise everyone. <laughs>